It's me, plain, simple, Jesse. Hello, interwebs. I hope you are all doing well because I am here to discuss a book that I am very excited to talk about, and that is the latest Star Trek book release, Star Trek Picard, Second Son by Una McCormick. A lot of things to say about this book before I get into the review proper. Number one, I am going to tell you this right up front. Many people dismiss tie-in novels, and I've always been someone who has been a big defender of tie-in novels. I think there are some really great tie-in novels, and I think people dismissing tie-in fiction just on its face, I think are missing some really good literature but I want to make that especially clear in this case this is one of the best books that I have read this year like hands down this book is fantastic and that is both surprising and not surprising in equal measure the reason that that is surprising on the one hand is that this is a Star Trek Picard novel now if you have followed me elsewhere on my other channels or in some of my reviews that I've done about Star Trek, I have been a big fan generally of modern Star Trek, with the one exception being the series Star Trek Picard. I have not loved either Star Trek Picard Season 1 or Season 2. I am willing to give my hope to Season 3. Maybe it'll be better. But my issues with Picard have mainly come down to storytelling choices within the seasons themselves. And we, I could talk all day about those choices. I have thoughts on both of those seasons, let's just say, and not all of them particularly positive. But one thing that I will say about Star Trek Picard is that while I have not liked the stories that they have told, or at least the ways that they have told those stories, one aspect of the series that I have liked is actually the world building that they've done with the 25th century uh, Star Trek universe. I really actually think that just conceptually, a lot of the ideas that they've had have been really good. Not all of them uh, used well, but I really have liked the world building aspect of uh, Star Trek Picard. Now, the reason I say all of that is because the reason that this book is not surprising that I like it so much is that it is written by one Una McCormick, who hands down is not only one of my, in fact, my favorite Star Trek tie-in novel author, but one of my favorite authors generally. She is an author who is just, she's written a lot of tie-in Star Trek fiction and other fiction like for, uh, I believe, like Doctor Who and uh, Firefly, as well as written one of her own books, and they're always great. But she is such a great author at taking a look at political systems, namely like fascist systems, authoritarian systems, uh, in particular the, the Cardassians and some of her other Star Trek novels, and taking uh, an understanding of how those societies affect individuals and how the ideologies of these systems become ingrained, these sort of venerations of state become ingrained in individuals and how that both uh, becomes part of an individual's personality, so the understanding of this state, while also the harm that it causes these people too and the generational and community and cultural traumas that come out of that. Some of her best work has been the post Star Trek Nemesis books that are no longer canon, where she goes into a post uh, Dominion War Cardassia as it seeks to rebuild after not only the damage of the Dominion War, but also the uh, the damage that they had even before then living under an authoritarian regime and the deep programming they had to go through because of that. And what's interesting about this book in particular is that because those tie-in novels that I just referred to, the post-Nemesis books, got sort of wiped from canon recently because Star Trek Picard came along, this is a book that has Una McCormick kind of returning to those stories in that world, but being able to sort of retell it in a new way that fits within the canon that Star Trek Picard has set up. And like I said, I think she is not only able to do so in a way that is uh, not just regurgitating the things that she did before, but actually showcasing us an entirely new version of events that fits in with Star Trek Picard, but does so in a way that is both a really great meditation on what I said before, uh, systems of uh, authoritarianism and uh, fascism and how they create cycles of abuse and trauma. And yet, in true grand Star Trek tradition, this is a book about restorative justice, about healing, about what it's like to sort of see these generational traumas build upon each other and how hate continues to fester and how, how we can think about maybe beginning trying to break those cycles of hate and pain and trauma. It is a book that I think 
fits into what Star Trek Picard as a series has always tried to do, take a darker look but show us how we get to the light, but does it in a way that I think is better than anything Star Trek Picard has ever done, and actually telling us a really beautiful story to boot. So that's everything that I'm going to say about this book right now. I am not going to get into full spoilers with the book because I want you to all go out and read it, but if what I have already said has not sold you on the book enough, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this book specifically as I get further into the review, and there will be some things that some people may be consider spoilers, and that is just going to be just a couple pieces of information that come up in the first, like, sixth of the book that is not on the tin of the novel, like you don't see it in the back here, but it is something that is relatively early in the story, as well as the structure of the story uh, as a whole. So if those things sound like they're going to spoil you on the book, I don't think it, like, spoils the entire text tail by any means, but if that's something that you don't want to hear at all and go in cold, I can give you my biggest recommendation to this book. I, I cannot recommend it enough. But if I have not sold you or you want to hear more discussion of the book if you've already read it, uh, I'll just keep going on that front. So this book centers around the character of Raffi, uh, sort of Picard's kind of second hand uh, in Star Trek Picard, the one who, uh, as we saw in season one, was dealing with uh, having been a drug abuser and her kid sort of having left her um, and trying to find a way to heal herself and also look for a way to find her way back into seeing herself as a full person in society again. And then in season two of Picard, we see her back in Starfleet. And so see, this book takes place between season one and two and follows her character as she's on that journey, as she's looking and thinking about, like after Picard season one, where she started to do that work, how she can start to rebuild her life. Uh, and we sort of see her journey going into Starfleet. Uh, and because of that, uh, Picard sends her on a mission to sort of wet her feet and get back to see if she wants to be in Starfleet and also into Starfleet intelligence where she used to work. And this mission, and here's where the mild spoiler part comes in, because this isn't revealed at the front, but does come in about a sixth of the way through the book. The mission he sends her on is to bring in a Cardassian war criminal who the Bajorans uh, wish to bring back to put on trial for Dominion War and Occupation atrocities. And that war criminal is none other than Elam Garrick. Yes, our favorite uh, plain and simple tailor from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And again, if you know uh, if you know Una McCormick at all, I was not shocked by that revelation at all. Uh, we all know Una McCormick loves to write about her lovely Cardassians. Um, so uh, I was like, oh, she just used this as an excuse to write a Garrick novel. But I really, and I thought initially when I saw that, I was like, oh, she's just gonna she's gonna kind of ignore the Star Trek Picard stuff and just really get into the Cardassian stuff that she's really interested in. But no, that's not the case. This is very much a Raffi book that does intersect with those other aspects uh, of the Star Trek universe that uh, Una McCormick has found so uh, deeply fascinating throughout her work. And what we end up going to is we go to this planet called Ordeve, which was a planet that was initially under Cardassian, well, it was a planet that was initially Bajoran way back in the day, and then when the Cardassian occupation came, they came and took over the planet. Then after the Dominion War, when the Cardassians were being slaughtered by the Dominion after, as they were leaving and surrendering in that war, Romulans came and took it over. But now, after that point, Cardassians were able to reclaim it again, and at this point in the story that we meet uh, Rafi in, she uh, is found that there are many Romulan refugees that have been settled on there after the events of uh, Star Trek 2009 and Star Trek Picard, and so she's going there to try to number one try and settle the situation because there's some hot heated situation that's her sort of over uh like her cover situation but she's also going there to grab garrick now she was also there back in the past where she had been uh, on this planet uh where she had been dealing with the post dominion war stuff so she has some history and ties to this world so she has some emotional trauma coming into the story and it kind of creates such an interesting structure for this novel because as i sort of describe this planet to you you can see that there's a history of people coming in and replacing I'm using that word specifically there, other people in it. And when I say the word replace, you can probably get the hint that what that means is there were genocides that happen. And this book does not shy away from that. Each one of those stories, those events of people coming in, reflects a genocide of people, whether they be displaced or whether they actually have been attempted to be murdered uh, in several cases. And what this book is basically discussing is how those traumas, and those feelings of genocides not only create a cycle of genocides, having led to things over and over and over and over again happen, but how those traumas get built up over and over and over again through time. Not just culturally, but in individuals 
who had to face them, who participated in them, potentially, who um, were family members of people who were killed during those genocides. It's a very hard book to read because it doesn't shy away from any of that. And the interesting structure of this novel is it kind of is uh, like descending in and descending out. It starts off the book in the present day of Rafi's timeline. Then as you get about a third of the way into the book, it goes back in time to uh, the time that Rafi was there before. And then as you get further into the novel, it goes back in time again to when the Bajorans were still living there under Cardassian rule. And you get to see how it going backwards and then it goes forward again and goes back up through all those layers. And you really get to see this just fascinating structure that she built that you get to see the aftermath of certain events then you get to see what happened before what happened before and then you get to see the aftermath again of all those things building up it's such a really fascinating structure of a novel that really i think contends really well with allowing you to see the pain and trauma and built up cycles of uh, abuse while also allowing you to have number one maintain some intrigue to the story because these going into the past certainly isn't uh just to like go and look at them like they do tie into the larger narrative as we build back up but also to uh just really also reflect on how do we how do you heal from all of these things and who can heal who's allowed to heal after these events um and it's by no means trying to let anyone off the hook for having participated in atrocities but also trying to look at like what's what's the best way forward uh, after something like this happens and i really found it to be such a great meditation on all of those things but that is not just to say this is a very uh, only high-minded book there are some great characterization for raffi i think there's some really deep understandings about her as a character and what caused her to be at that sort of dark place that we see her at in star trek picard season one but how she's trying to build herself back up to season two the book just she just writes raffi so well like raffi was never a character that I was super drawn to in picard but like here she writes her una mccormick writes raffi just so evocatively that i really feel like i'm in her head i'm like yeah i really start to understand who she is as a person some of the pros and the ways she describes like her interactions with picard for example are so spot on and you see how sometimes she feels like she's just an object for others to use um and not really seen as a full person sometimes picard himself does that to her sometimes she does it to herself um but other characters that una does really well with are elnor as well again another character that i don't care super much about in the show but here i think she just his his earnest honesty as a character really pushes back against like characters like Garrick and even Raffi herself and allows them to sort of see this sort of earnestness that gets them into trouble sometimes but also reflects back at them the truth of a lot of what they were dealing with like really not only using this idea of um uh like eternal honesty uh that uh that uh Elnor represents as a character with the Jot Va Jot I forget the uh the the Romulan nuns that he is part of that always speak the truth not only reflecting it just literally with him always speaking the truth but like reflecting the truth back of what this situation is back at them and just wonderfully captures Elnor both symbolically and his voice as a character we also get other characters appearing in here too Seven of Nine sadly does not appear too much in here so if any of you are looking for some sapphic elements uh, of this book sadly that is not the case uh, there is an audio drama with both of the actors uh, if you're looking for that set between Star Trek Picard season one and season two I did a review of that uh, which is also really great but you do get Rios in here you do get a little bit of Picard you do get a little bit of Laris uh, and they all sort of naturally tie into the book but not overly so so you don't get the sense of like oh there's like cameos throughout the book um and garrick himself plays a distinctly important role in the story as well the thing like i said that i have to commend una mccormick on the most is that she isn't regurgitating the stuff that she already did in other versions of canon like i said she could have easily just taken this book and just like used it as a way to like you know all that stuff they got erased in beta canon well screw you i'm putting it back in i'm going to make it come back in here and just do the same thing again and make it official canon now uh she could have easily done that if she had wanted to um but she didn't she took this opportunity with a new version of canon to be presented and decided well what does that reflect about what would this reflect about the characters that i i written about before and what how would that change them this new version of history what would that mean and i think the places she takes them are really fascinating and interesting um so credit to her that she was not precious with her earlier ideas but willing to try something new and i think it, it ultimately makes one of the best star trek books that i've read and certainly one of the best books that i've read this year and i've read a fair few books this year so i will wrap out my review there and i will just say this 
If you are at all interested in Star Trek novels, if you are at all interested in Star Trek Picard, if you are at all interested in good science fiction literature that just happens to come packaged in a tie-in novel, I cannot recommend this book enough. It is a difficult book to read, not something you necessarily would always think about when you think of tie-in fiction, but it is an absolutely beautiful one at times too. Um, and it just goes again to continually prove to me why Una McCormick is one of my favorite authors uh, of all time, just regardless of uh, tie-in fiction or not. Um, so that's my review. One other thing I will be saying is I actually am very lucky. I'm going to be getting to interview and talk to Una McCormick herself on the lovely um, uh, Positively Trek podcast. So if any of you listen to the Positively Trek podcast, I was asked to uh, come co-host on their book club where they're reading this book in just a few weeks and where Una McCormick herself will be on. Uh, so that hasn't happened yet as the time of this recording and probably not by the time that this video will go up. But uh, subscribe to the Positively Trek podcast. It's not my own. It's a friend of mine. It's a great podcast. I love listening to it. Um, so go... Uh, subscribe to that if you don't want to miss that and when that does come out I will put it in the link below so if you're coming at this video several weeks or months down the line um, from when I released it that should be down below for you to listen to if you want to hear more about this otherwise love to hear your thoughts about this book down in the comments below beyond all that thank you so much for listening I hope you all my friends live long and prosper <laughs>